Seeking the truth in a skewed reality. Welcome. Yes, welcome to you. In this vlog, I'm going to re-explore themes that I've talked about in other vlogs many, many times, uh, but maybe dispersed across other vlogs. In particular, I'm going to look at what is reality. Do we co-create our realities? What is truth? Is truth even desirable? Uh, but this time I'm going to do with a concentration on materialist science. Um, you may argue that I'm somewhat guilty of scientism in how I approach this, uh, but maybe not if you recognise that I'm taking a sort of social science perspective on this. Uh, whatever, whatever. I try to resist the accusation of scientism. And I hope you understand, I'm simply applying science to, to help to explain these rather difficult concepts. Rather than attempting to place my beliefs within an irrefutable logic, uh, especially as I reject the concept of an irrefutable logic. Truth. Before discussing truth, uh, which of course I've already discussed in many vlogs, but in particular the vlog called The Truth Seeker, uh, but I need to add that during my meditations I've been told that lying is more serious than murder within the paranormal. And, and this view has been reinforced to me many times. Uh, but I've also, in meditation, I've been introduced to a group of people seated at a long table that look remarkably like Leo da Vinci's painting of The Last Supper. Now, I'm not making any great claims to, to who these people are. It's probably just that I'm very familiar with this image. And, you know, it's an image that came up in meditation. Uh, but I've been told by these people to speak my truth. So these, so truth is very important to me for both of those reasons. So, yeah, whatever I might argue, truth, truth is paramount. Now, the starting point of what we're talking about is, of course, the health crisis. Now, that's just a convenient point. What we're really talking about is, is what I see as very worrying changes within society, changes that are ongoing, changes that certainly predate the health crisis, and changes that certainly have continued even after this sort of health crisis is apparently subsiding. So that's just a convenient way of trying to place it in a point in time, and as you know, I don't really believe in time anyway. But, you know, it's, it's, it's just to help you to understand where I'm coming from. So it's a convenience, if you like. Now, regarding the health crisis, a good many of us, not simply us, there was an awful lot of us who knew that there was something wrong with the official narrative. We knew that there was untruths being told. We knew that the truth was being bent. We knew that there was an all-out assault on getting us to believe things that in where heart of hearts we knew couldn't possibly be the whole truth. Uh, even though, and especially on this platform, you know, but social media in general, well, the mainstream media, social media, we weren't even allowed to propose that an alternative narr narrative existed let alone to express it. And I mean, that, that, let's face it, is still the case. Even though what we're seeing as alternative narratives two years ago, a year ago even, now have become the accepted narrative. So, you know, what has happened People call it waking up, and I hate it when they call it waking up. But, you know, it has been a wake-up call to so many of us. And my massive, massive concern, and, and you might think I'm overplaying it, but, you know, hey, 
<laughs> Why don't we discuss it in the comments section? My real concern is that this crisis has destroyed capitalism as we know it. Now, now maybe the financial crisis, the banking crisis, already did that. Uh, but certainly this is, I believe, the final nail in the coffin of what we thought of as capitalism. In doing so, it's, it's destroyed economies. And, you know, you, you cannot shut down economies for over two years and expect everything to be normal. It's destroyed people's livings, for sure. I mean, you know, even my eldest stepdaughter, she lost her job as mo the moment the crisis hit, and she's never worked since. At a critical, well, her first ever job. So a critical point in her career. She just left university, very well qualified, got a good job, and lost it. So she, it's not only destroyed her living, but it's destroyed her means of making a living. Maybe destroyed her very career, her very ability to make a livelihood. It's destroyed governments. I mean, look at what's happened in the United States. Absolute chaos, political chaos. Destroyed our faith in politicians, you know. You cannot open social media without people arguing polemically about what's happened in the US. And I mean, it's happening everywhere, don't get me wrong. But destroyed our faith in politicians completely. Destroyed, I would argue, liberal democracy. Destroyed human rights. I mean, for goodness sake, look at Australia and Canada. But I mean, it's happening everywhere. Uh, destroyed our rights to privacy. You know, in, 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 our, in Indonesia, where I live, we have to use this app, um, which, I mean, essentially it's spyware. And, uh, you know, we have to use this app to get into many, many places, including shopping bars, government offices, access public transport, etc, etc, etc. So absolutely destroyed human rights, destroyed our rights to privacy, destroyed tolerance. You know, you look on social media, the hatred that people have for others, others who have an alternative opinion. And as I say, these alternative opinions, you know, I mean, some of them are crazy, don't get me wrong. Some of them are far from it. So it's destroyed trust in fellow man, destroyed trust altogether, destroyed communities, neighbours hating neighbours, destroyed our confidence in Western medicine, destroyed our confidence in science. It's destroyed the mainstream media, destroyed news. I mean, I mean, I will never believe the BBC ever again. And, and I used to religiously, every day, look at the BBC and, and believe everything they said. So it's destroyed truth, hasn't it? It's destroyed truth forever. Now I could go on and on and on, and <laughs> believe me, I could. <laughs> uh, but it seems to me that there's no going back. The changes I'm talking about are profound changes. Indeed, for me, it's left me questioning. Has my entire life, has everything I've done, everything I've worked for, been for absolutely nothing? Every cause that I've ever cared about has simply been a false narrative created to get a response from me. And I often joke that I'm a champion of lost causes. But what if all these lost causes have all been constructed? Uh, potentiality. I've mentioned before that quantum physics, physicists see everything as a potentiality, or at least some do. Uh, so everything is possible, but they don't have the same probabilities. Now, I have talked before that anything is possible, which might seem strange to you, but if... Well, I'm about to explain it all, but basically, if you can just, for this moment, grasp that anything is possible, but it doesn't mean that everything is probable. To illustrate this, I'm going to talk about potentiality and probability as though they're the same. And they might be. <laughs> I'm going to use the word, but in all probability. <laughs> well, yeah, in all probability, they may be very different. Uh, but nevertheless, this is an illustration. The whole of this vlog is an illustration to help you understand some of the concepts, difficult concepts that I've been talking about. So if you think, take anything in nature, anything that's naturally occurring, it'll have a normal distribution of 
you may remember from your maths class, a bell-shaped curve. When we have a normal distribution, the mean, so the arithmetic average, the median, the mid-value, and the mode, the most common value, are equal, i.e. they're all at the same point, the middle of this bell-shaped curve. However, particularly within social sciences, we see distributions that are skewed. So distributions that are not bell-shaped curves. The most common being a negative skew, which means that the mean and the median are smaller than the mode. Uh, a positive skew, which means that the mean and median are larger than the mode. Uh, but of course, there are many other types of skews. Um, and indeed, you know, as, as an academic, I spent a great deal of time trying to understand these types of the other types of distributions. And the main reason for this is man's intervention, because if it was naturally occurring, it would be a bell-shaped curve, generally speaking, almost always. Um, I, I'm sure it, when you were taught this in maths, they got the tallest kid to stand in the centre, and the next tallest either side, and so on. And then he said, there you go, that's a bell-shaped curve. So, you know, that was the illustration of it. And now, I used to produce heavy-duty statistical models to understand how pupils would do in exams at school. Uh, but the examination output data, which I don't believe you can get anymore, even, but it used to be published in the UK, it was far from a normal distribution. In particular, it was very much skewed around the pass mark, uh, but also around the grade points. And the reason for this was those doing the marking were more generous to those on the borderline. I, I don't think it was a bias. I think it's only natural, you know. If somebody is, is very, very close to a borderline, you're likely to give them the benefit of the doubt. But you could see in the statistics that that's exactly what they've done. So if, it were, if that was not occurring, we'd see a normal distribution whereby the mean, the median and the mode were, the, were, were identical. But that, that wasn't the case. So if you're thinking of what reality is, reality should have a normal distribution. So if we're saying, well, this is our reality, so our reality should have a normal distribution, whereby the arithmetic average the mid-value and the most common value are all identical. In other words, most of us would agree on the most likely position. Not all of us. Remember, it's a distribution. Some would be far to the left or far to the right of it. But nevertheless, there'd be a convergence around this midpoint. So if we apply this to the truth, this would mean, what a, what a bad word, but I can't think of any of this would imply, <laughs> that there was broad consensus. And I'm only saying broad consensus because remember you can move along the curve. Uh, but if there's been an effort to construct an alternative narrative, then the distribution is skewed. In other words, the most common opinion is neither the midpoint nor the arithmetic mean. Does this matter? Well, does it matter? Yes, because the truth is most likely to be the mean. But if we follow the consensus, then that's the mode. Uh, which takes us right back to the beginning. What is truth? Is truth about relativism? Well, yes, it is. Yes, it is. There is no truth. There's only a relative truth, particularly if you think of a distribution, even a normal distribution. Some people will have a different truth to others. So, you know, yes, it is relative. Uh, but when it's obviously being manipulated, in other words, we can see a skewed distribution, we have to cherish the truth as an ideal. Constructed realities. Uh, well, I've argued before, but certainly since the Enlightenment, uh, we live in what I would describe as a materialistic paradigm. Do you know, I, I hate the word paradigm, I don't know about you. I used to be an academic and 
suddenly this word paradigm appeared from nowhere and everybody used it all the time but I actually really do mean paradigm you know a way of seeing the universe and the shifts in these paradigms so I actually mean paradigm um, so there's, there's emerged a broad consensus that capitalism or at least capitalism as defined by the Chicago school and liberal democracy provide the greatest benefits to the largest number of people now you, you could argue that maybe China maybe the Soviet maybe, maybe more than half the world doesn't agree with that so that really does explain how we're on a distribution you know but there has been a broad consensus that some sort of distribution of both economic and political power is good. Also that society is progressive and that mankind is, mankind is becoming increasingly healthy, increasingly affluent and increasingly sophisticated. That science, rather than religion, should guide how we organise society and how we take moral judgments. But as I say, everything has changed forever. You know, even using material science, we're not becoming more healthy, we're becoming less. For most of us, we're not becoming more affluent, we're becoming less affluent. And if both of those things are happening, can we honestly say that society is becoming more sophisticated, that science is progressive? And if science has been corrupted in the way that I've argued that it has, should we not be following religion on a whole variety of issues? Not just the distribution of wealth and the distribution of power, but how we should apply science. Should we not be turning back to science? Because, well, religion might have been corrupted, but nothing like how science is. I believe we should. <laughs> so the attempt is to shift the paradigm in an attempt to skew the possibility curve, or the probability curve. Now, maybe the materialist probability curve, so the, the paradigm we've lived in since the Enlightenment, was already skewed, i.e. it was a long way from the truth. Uh, but there's no doubt at the moment that it's been skewed once more. It feels, but maybe this is just because I'm seeing it from a materialist paradigm, but it feels like it's been skewed even further away from the truth to me. Now, who are they? Who are they who's doing it? Now, now, the last thing I want to do is promote, an, and I don't think I'm allowed to say the word, so we'll call it a sea theory. Although it's all too apparent to me that collusion, corruption and manipulation are rife and, and becoming worse. No, an understanding of the skewed distribution would suggest that there's no need to invent a C theory, simply to promote ideas that are removed from the mean. So in other words, if you're promoting ideas that are removed from the mean, they gather a momentum. It doesn't have to be a C, it's just people latching on to this new paradigm. With this knowledge, what should we do? What should we do about it? If we can understand, if you can grasp what I'm saying, if you agree with what I'm saying, what should we do? Well, to me, truth is revealed to us through meditation. It's not about what we are told or taught. So you will hear me say, speak from the heart, not from the head. Because the head, what when you speak from the head, this is what you've been told or taught, and this is the attempt to, to skew your paradigm speak from the heart speak from what is revealed in meditation so through meditation when we're sure of our truth we must not simply hold on to it don't simply keep it to ourselves but we need to take every opportunity to publicise it now I say publicise but not promote it for if I was attempt to promote my thoughts on you or anybody else for that matter <coughs> then I am no better than those I'm criticising. No, it is simply a sort of a liberalism of ideas or a pluralism of ideas that all ideas should be expressed, which is why I'm so against 
censorship and the sort of censorship that has happened on this channel, on this platform and across social media over the last few years. Of course, with this attack on truth and the abuse of censorship, what I'm saying is becoming an increasingly radical, if not revolutionary, idea. got something out of it but provoked thoughts I'm not here to push my beliefs my thoughts on you only to open up your own thinking get you thinking about the world and life when I started the real magic of Java I believed that I'd only release them every month or, or maybe every two months uh, but now I find myself adding to this subsection once or twice a week uh, but please subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications for when I add new parts to this subsection in part the reason why I'm doing it more often is that the concept has moved from filming rituals and events that took place in Java to me also describing my beliefs and philosophy and that does come in response to people expressing an interest in it. But of course, you know, me actually seeing rituals and events uh, really doesn't happen so often. What I would say to you is that there's no attempt at subterfuge on my behalf. And when I do experience rituals, I will include them for you to see. And as I say, there's no way I'm trying to mislead you. And if if I believe there is subterfuge, uh, if I uncover it, I will point it out to you. I'm trying to be as honest as I can be. Now, please make comments. Please ask questions. And I'll try to be as, as honest and open with you as I can be. Of course, there will be some of you who disagree with me, particularly when I talk in terms, to, terms of my own beliefs, my own feelings. And, you know, you're welcome to alternative feelings and we can agree to disagree. Um, sometimes I find that people on YouTube can be unnecessarily attacking and aggressive. And at times I don't restrain myself enough and I apologise. But it's not my intention to put anybody down, you know. I, I know what I talk about can be emotive. Um, and it, it can be challenging challenging to your beliefs um, but you know I'd, I'd love to enter an open discussion a heartfelt discussion but unfortunately I, I often come across things that are oh especially when people quote the scriptures to me I, I, I've just no idea where it takes us you know. because I'm speaking from the heart you know I mean you know sorry sorry if you want to quote the scriptures I so, but it doesn't have much impact on me, you know. I personally have no desire to impose my feelings on you, and I suppose when people try to do it to me, I, you know, it, well, it washes off, you know. All I'm trying to do is I, 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 I'm trying to share my feelings with you, and I'd love, I'd love an open discussion on feelings. I really would. I really would love it, you know. And sorry, sorry if I don't always react. As best I should. I, I try and cure this in myself, but I think this is part of the sort of narcissism of social media that I talk about so much in this subject. So, look, if you've enjoyed it, I really urge you to listen to other sections on this channel, particularly the four audio books that I've uploaded onto this channel. Yes, they are in a novel format, they are novels. They go into much greater depth than my thoughts and feelings. Now, what I would say to you is these are sequential. So my thoughts and feelings develop as we go through each chapter and each book. 
So it does begin with 1.1, the Chinese cemetery. But, you know, hey, it's up to you. Feel free to dip in as, as you wish, as you want. And, you know, really heartfelt thanks for listening to this. And I really want to say a great big thank you and God bless you.